look at a site. Um, even now, there's different ways people congest content. It may not even be through your site. So focusing on the content is the most important part. And there's this word in here, design, which from the Webster Dictionary, the actual definition is to plan or make something for a specific use or purpose. Okay, so a lot of times when you hear the word design, you think of pretty, but really what you're doing when you're designing is you're designing that interaction. You're designing a purpose. You're, you have a problem and you're basically building a solution. And with websites, the most important part is communication. So to communicate, you gotta think all the way back to content first. Content is the most important. And I like to say, form follows function. And in this context, form is content. Um, content is the basic structure that you will build off, and then the, the beauty, I'm sorry, con text, the content is the function. The form follows from the content that you create. So treat text as a user interface, because it is the most important part. And again, think content first. And with content first, the most important part is the markup itself. Um, so this is for example, you have title, subheading, paragraph text. And thinking of your content in the markup is actually probably the most important part to start. When I start designing a site, I start with zero styles. I start with the text on the page. I look at the way the text is hier hierarchy, um, you know, the most important title, subheading, paragraph, and see how all the content flows with no styles. This will basically future-proof your site for many different devices, or if your site is being congested in something like Safari Reader, where it basically goes through your site grabs out the content, grabs out the markup, and then presents it in its own way. If you haven't put focus in this, your content may not look properly on something that has pulls in your content, relying on these different markup. Then build on top of that. Once you have your basic structure, start adding your style. Don't worry about layout yet. Just focus on you know the typography. Focus on your weights, your line heights, um, you know, the, the actual typography that you're using for the content. And when you're actually focusing on content and focusing on the typography, try and stay away from pixels as well. Um, in this day and age, pixel is no longer really a pixel. A pixel is almost like a emulation now on many different devices. If you think of the iPhone, where the resolution is twice it was the original iPhone that came out. But they still keep the same exact pixel resolution to the web browser that they're serving. So it's kind of this emulated resize factor where the pixels are four times larger than originally. So even though Apple takes care of this, there are other devices out there that may not treat <coughs> the pixel device hardware and software pixel the same. The web, the web is not a fixed medium. And wherever, you, you can take the web anywhere, on many different devices. So thinking M first is definitely important. And a lot of people like to even think pixel and then convert to an M. But you know what? Math is complicated. And, or you're just lazy. So why spend all the time converting pixels to EMs, where if you start designing and just designing around the EMs themselves, you know, you don't have to worry about the math and converting and, you know, worrying about, oh, is this a pixel-perfect design? It's hard to design a pixel-perfect design, uh, especially with responsive design. You get a PSD mock-up from a designer, you create one, you send it to a client, and they're like, oh, this is perfect, let's run with it. Or, and you, you bring it to the browser, and then they're like, hey, but when I'm at this position on the screen, or when my aunt is looking at it on her you know, BBM from 2005, something's a little weird. It doesn't look exactly like what you sent me in the PSD. It was like, so you look at it and you're like, oh, it's working well. You know, it's, it's just responded to and adapted to the device. But they have a hard time understanding that as well. Um, the other problem too is, you may, I, actually I've had this happen as well. I've created three different comps. One for, you know, the tablet, the mobile, and the desktop view. Um, and I sent that to the client. 
And they're like, you know what? I like the middle one. And I was like, well, that's great, but you know, this is going to be used across you know different devices. This is an idea of how it's going to work. So it is a little hard to explain to clients um, what exactly even response it is. So I've actually began designing Raven Browser, where I can actually send them samples of the site and have them interact with the content right from the beginning. So designing responsibly is starting a whole new thought process of how we go about designing websites. To no longer focus on the devices, to no longer focus on the layout, but to first start with the most important part of the site, which is the content. And you know, if you still want to do the math, focus on pixels first, here it is. Um, target divided by context equals M. Um, but you get some numbers like this at times. And if you want to be pixel perfect and browsers, you know, they round all differently, you're going to have to put that in your style sheet. And that just looks messy. But if you're focusing, you know, M first, designing in the browser, you can come up with a beautiful number like that. Super easily maintainable. The also beauty of designing in browser is you can test this rapidly. And now what this actually is, is the amount of characters per line at any given time, you know, in the different sizes, the resizing of the window or on different device. And CPL is pretty important. Basically, you want to average around 60 to 75, some even say 100 characters per line, but I like to say in the 50, you know, 65 mark. And what they say is the more characters per line you have, the easier a user starts to become um, almost fatigued from reading or they get distracted. But also, the shorter you have, it's much more eye, con uh, eye movement going back and forth on each line. So then, you know, the user also gets fatigued from that. So you want to find that perfect sweet spot. And focusing on, you know, your content, having it easily resized, using a relative um, measurement. Wait, is that right? Uh, well, using a measurement of text that will adapt to, you know, the baseline height of the set font size is definitely important and easy. Um, using M's, you can basically set a different font base size for each media query that you set. So it makes it a lot easier to begin playing with this at different screen, screen widths. Let typography dictate the layout widths. So as you're playing with the CPL, resizing your browser, you know, find that sweet spot where you have that perfect amount of characters per line, you know, on average, on your content. And that would be your first break point. Set it there. Don't focus, oh, you know, this is an iPhone. Let me put my uh, media query for, you know, 480 pixels wide. Everyone's going to love this, um, especially people on the flip phones with, you know, 240 width. Um, and like Ethan showed in his keynote earlier, there's more people than just you in the world. There's more people than just, you know, with the latest iPhone or the latest Android. And a lot of times we're focusing around these devices that we have thinking that's the rest of the world, when it's really not. So focusing on typography, you're basically not thinking about, you know, the latest, the greatest, or anyone. You're really thinking about the user. Who is using your site? Because you're focusing on the content, which the user is coming to your site. So set breakpoints around the content, not the devices. Explore the design where it naturally breaks, and adjust your layout then. And also know that the media queries are not just for layout changes. You can adjust the font size, you can adjust the line heights, the padding, the margin around the content to maximize the readability on these different devices. And don't forget about height media queries. Um, I even know a lot of people who don't even know you can actually do height media queries. But what a great example for this would be something like columns in CSS3. Uh, on a longer page where you might have to scroll, columns are pretty useless because once you get to the bottom of one column, you have to scroll back up onto the top of the page. But also on wider devices, you also run the problem with, um, with a single column layout of these long, drawn-out sentences. So if you have the height where you can actually fit all your content in on the screen size, you can use columns. And then the user doesn't have to worry about re-scrolling back to the page. And they get all the content right on the single page, which users actually prefer as well, because they kind of get an idea of you know, what's to come. Don't just use M's in for topography, but also use it in the media queries. 
this is we're focusing around these texts and um, the topography of the site and the content. Using M's will always be relative to the device that it's on to the base size that's set. For most browsers, it is 16 pixels um, that the browser sets by default, but some other browsers may you know, have a different font size. And I even find, instead of setting a hard pixel, um, set your font to 100% at base. Um, then, you know, just let the browser give the font size that it thinks is best for the person, because most likely, you know, they are the one that created that browser. They're the one that may have even created the device. They kind of have an idea of, you know, this would be the best font size for whoever's reading the content. So based around that, and then adjust around, you know, different widths, um, with M's and relative to, you know, the content. And a great example of this is actually CSS tricks. Let me see if I can open this up. Um, so this is actually, huh, how do I do this? All right, I'll show you after the presentation. Um, but so this is an example of a user zooming into the site before using M's for the um, for the media queries. And what ends up happening is your, your content, your layout begins to break. As you can see, really popular in like the navigation on most sites. If you begin to zoom in maybe two, three levels, you can find this. And don't think people don't zoom into sites either. I've had clients where they've specifically requested size like 12 font on their site, and then they send me a screenshot. Hey, the site looks a little weird. And I'm like, oh, that is weird. Like, I don't know what's going on. Then I ask them to, you know, tell me their browser zoom level. And it's like 150%. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, you wanted 12 pixels, but you're zooming in. I don't understand. <laughs> so focusing around ends in your media queries will help alleviate this problem. Also, don't judge physical context by resolution. Um, so focusing on M again, you're focusing basically on your content, and you basically adjust around that. But you know, every now and then, you know, you may say, all right, there's this bug on this specific width. Let me just throw in a fix for it. But again, focusing on your content, you will run into less bugs like that. But don't just go by resolution alone. For example, a TV does not mean a higher resolution. The Galaxy 3 that just came out has a higher resolution than my laptop. Um, it's pretty insane. Even the iPhone, if you think about it, the actual native resolution of the pixel density is much higher than a lot of devices out there. So just going by the resolution alone will not always give you the best results. Don't limit experiences. Um, a lot of times I see people start on a desktop design, and by the time they get to the mobile design, a lot of the features are left out. Or, even better, you come to a site you get this pop-up before even the page loads, and it says, hey, we have this awesome app, go check it out. And you're like, well, I just wanted to read this content really quick. <laughs> and, you know, basically doing that is an annoyance. I don't really know why a lot of people do it. I guess it's because they spend so much money on the app that they really want people to use it. But if you focus on the responsive design from the get-go, you really don't need to worry about an app for most cases. Also, don't display none. I see a lot of times on mobile sites, um, well actually I don't see a lot of times on mobile sites, and you know, it's almost how it should be, I don't believe in sliders, but there is no slider. But on the full site, there may be a slider. And what you realize on your mobile device is this hang, this, this seconds that you're sitting there staring at a page with nothing happening. And what's happening is they just display none on a slider, which is still loading those gigantic images in the background, even though it's not going to display ever to the user. But the user is paying for it with these load times. And even if they're on a smaller data plan, they may be pulling in these gigantic images and wasting their data not even knowing it. So performance is key. When designing, you know, start mobile first, start content first. Really focus on what is important to the user. Focus on what you really need. Like I said earlier, if it's important on, if it's not important on 13 inches, is it really important, no, if it's not important on 3 inches, is it really important on 13 inches? So think about that. Really start to change the process and look at 
the most important features, the most important part of your site, what the true message of your site is and what you're trying to deliver and receive back from the client. More than a second can cause the visitor to interrupt their flow or thought, creating a poor experience. Around three seconds, a user will not um, return to your site or even rec recommend end it to another user. So speed becomes very, very important in designing the website. Um, Ethan, again, earlier today, explained a lot of this and actually showed some awesome stats, and not just from America, but around the world. Um, so loading times become very, very important. And you also see this increase in sites these days of becoming much, much larger than they were just a few years ago. Uh, with the more and more capable devices, we think we can do much more on the site. But then we forget about networks and you know, different people without the you know, fastest internet files or Comcast, um, the highest speed. And we just think, all right, we could push this amount of pixels to the display, make it look beautiful. And you know, if a person can't load the site, well, you know, I didn't really know because my device is the only device in the world, which I find a lot of people do think at many times. The most important thing, too, is just to test, test, and test. Especially with responsive design, um, one thing I find a lot of people saying is, well, you know, I don't have that latest phone, or, you know, I don't have an iPad to test on, or I can't get the emulators to work. What I say is just go to your local phone service, carrier provider, and walk around, browse a few phones, load up your sites. You know, pretend to look for a new phone, but you know, you're testing your sites. You know, you get access to tons and tons of devices and you don't have to spend a dollar. So, and again, test. Test is definitely important. Um, test as much as possible. One of the best tools actually is just the squishy browser. Open up your browser and start minimizing, you know, the window size and see what happens. Um, even dock your inspector to the right. I know Chrome can do it, I'm sure Firefox can do it, um, but what I love in Chrome is when you dock your inspector to the right, it actually allows you to even squish the browser even smaller than um, it normally allows. So you really get to see how your content breaks down. <coughs> and two, you get all the tools to the right, nice full display, instead of having to pan around in a little box below a 300 pixel wide window. And don't just test the browsers and devices, but loading on different connectivity as well. Um, with the Mac, I know there's one tool with the Xcode called Network Link Conditioner, and this is actually a great tool that allows you to emulate different networks. So I can actually load this up and test what my site would load like on a 3G network, on a you know, bad quality 3G network on even an edge network, I believe, and just test on different bandwidths and things like that and see how your site reacts. A lot of sites even will, after a while, cut off loading and, you know, something may not load that was actually required for your site to work properly. A lot of times you do see JavaScript breaking on load and then half your site is unaccessible. Um, one great way to remedy this problem, again, Ethan mentioned earlier, is to think of progressive enhancement. And, um, well, I guess that's all. <laughs> and uh, if you have any questions and answers, or I, I'll have answers, <laughs> feel free to ask. And I know a lot of times when I give these talks, there's tons of questions, and I normally like to just give a quick